You are now listening to the Select Gaming Podcast. E3 had issues during the pandemic. There was a lot of、um, debate of whether they were going to open again and do what they were going to do. But now it's, it's finally been confirmed as of,、um, as of this week. E3 is shutting down for good, according to Variety.、Um, in a statement here, it says After more than two decades of hosting, An event that has served as a central showcase for the US and global video game industry, the Entertainment Software Association has decided to bring E3 to a close. Does anybody care? E3 used to be, it, it was like the Super Bowl of video gaming in terms of game previews, in terms of presentations, in terms of announcements. That was the place to be, okay? And now,、um, I don't think it matters as much as it used to. There's many reasons as to why I, of course, think that. But I mean, do you miss it? Do you miss seeing in your monthly subscription of EGM magazine pictures of gamer girls holding up Ridge Racer cartridges? Do you, do you miss it at all, good sir, Fall Staff? I miss Ridge Racer.、Uh, I don't、you、know if I miss Ridge Racer. The, I don't know if I miss the other stuff around it. I, I, uh, uh, the E3 was in the, E3 in the late 90s, early 2000s. From, from, for people that were outside the industry, that was the central way in which you got news about games.、Yeah. You found out about them. You were, you, you know, you'd log on to games, gamespot.com and you'd, and you'd read previews by some of the people in the gaming industry that you trusted and you found out what Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 was going to be like and so on and so on. The,、um, But also, we tend to forget that E3 for a good while was exceedingly boring. Like, it was a lot of like, you know, our fiscal numbers for quarter one were good. Our fiscal numbers for quarter two were a little bit better than expected. And, 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 that, and, that, and, and, and that wasn't for us. No, it's for the investors, right? I think they were all trying to replicate like an Apple keynote. That's what it sort of became, right? But the thing is, I think there's, there's three sort of reasons that I think E3 failed towards the end and which has led to its inevitable death. And I mean, so one of them is probably the cost to actually be a, like a presenter there, to have a booth, probably was crazy expensive. And I don't, I don't think that they lowered their prices over the years. I think it was something that they upped the price、um, for people to host an event there, right? So that probably hurt a lot of indie developers to showcase、yeah. anything. And it was crazy expensive compared to the alternative, which is online. And you already have an online infrastructure for you know, sending, your, sending your, 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 your products or games to YouTube channels and so on to be reviewed. The other two things that I, that I can think of are that it became a thing of access journalism. I think that that hurt a lot of companies because it's like, It just felt like scripted interviews, scripted content. You know what I mean? Like, you'd, you'd get these sort of fictitious, fake, phony interviews where they're gushing over things, and then you get the game, and then people are like, this game sucks, right?、Yeah. It's like this game was not what they were talking about. And then I think the other thing is that, I mean, when you think about these presentations that companies like Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft would have to do, those are like those keynotes. Are incredibly crucial for the year ahead. And when you have something like a price point that fails on a, on a live stage, that pretty much delegates the next 10 years of the company. When the Ridge Racer PSP fiasco happened,、yeah. that, was me- that was memed to death for Sony.、Yeah. Right? Like they, they, they got absolutely slaughtered on the internet afterwards because of that poor presentation. That like E3 can destroy a company like that in a way where it's like, well, here's your time slot and you have to do good. And if you don't and you screw up, it, that's going to live on the internet forever. Whereas these sort of monthly things, it's way more manageable and smarter for a company to actually have control over their content and their brand identity. I, I think you've given, I think you've actually given the sort of operative word there, which is that it's about, it's about, Individual companies maintaining corporate control over their messaging. And what's happened is that,、uh, you know, despite the fact that, of course, the, you know, the E3 is, is basically a, a corporate event put on by the ESA, the lobbying arm of, the, of all the corporations. So let's not say that E3 wasn't a corporate event. But, there, but 
there there it's much it's much uh, it's a much simpler prospect to maintain control over your message as a company when you are when you're able to send copies of games to who you want and to youtubers who are uh you know probably not uh you know except for some of the bigger ones who can skate by without it but some of the sort of small to medium sized uh youtube channels they may not have the necessarily the capacity to say no to an offer to be have sponsored content by a by a by a major developer and 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 in general i think despite the despite the appearance that we have more access to games now than before i do have a i do have a suspicion that overall the tendency has been that gamers have less and less access to pre- games pre-release than before and you know, you can point to a number of different factors, and I'm sure there's counter counter factors to prove the opposite. But game demos don't come out in the same way that they used to. Now you have 24 hour trials, but the 24 hour trials are pretty much once the game is out. You have sometimes generous release policies um, from companies like Steam, but you don't have you don't have anyone really doing these sort of unvarnished looks at games because the industry has sort of changed in its complexities. Uh, The game development process as a whole has become more complex, even though individual developers are increasingly being simplified and doing one thing and one thing only. This person's only doing hair. This person's only doing animations for running and so on and so on. So So I think what's happened with E3 is just symptomatic of an industry in general that's moving towards more internal control over the games, internal control over the narrative, internal control over who has access to these games and when. And I think that's probably in in the grand scheme of things. Although you know, I far far be it for me to be the apologist for the ESA and E three as a corporate event. But I think in the in the long term, having you know journalists who can go to E three and report back on their behind the scenes um, previews and so on, game journalists that you trust to do so in a in an honest way. I think overall, that's probably a bad thing. I think in general, E three is just. It's not needed anymore. To your point of an ever-changing industry, I think what's important to these companies is that they have as much control over announcements, brand identity, such and such, just because it is a make or break situation. The industry has gotten bigger to produce, you know, the cost to produce games has gotten significantly higher. So the less mistakes that can be made, the better. I think is how they're they're going about it. And I think when people think about E3, or I guess when these companies think about E3, it's a headache. It's talking heads, it's live things, it's deadlines, it's schedules. And I think they don't want that anymore. I mean, when I think when I think of E3 now, I mean, I I just have good memories of skimming through magazines and seeing some cool pictures or some cool announcements. And it was it was a thing to get excited about, right? When the internet wasn't um as big as a thing in terms of giving gamers news. I think we're, I think we have, there's a certain extent to which we uh, have the illusion of more and more access to video games than ever before. Um, but, you know, to your point, the, the new cycle, especially for games feels like it goes so quickly now. Uh, and, and, and so like, you know, I do, I remember when they announced some you know various games and the way i found out about it was actually a month after they after the announcement itself because it was in opm and 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 so so the 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 news became the news cycle was 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 much longer and much more durable than it is now so it be so i think it behooves a lot of these corporations to at least feel like you need to bring it all in house and 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 not let things linger because the more you let things linger from this from their sort of marketing perspective, the more the narrative goes out of control and potentially you get these sort of memeable moments. So I you know I do really really do think that this is um, th- this is a move to just ensure that the narrative remains at, remains at home and in house. I don't think E three was going to solve that. I think it's mostly our nostalgia for a particular time of E 3s history that means that you know we we, we wish it maintained in some form. But I just but you know and and there was that point in E 3s history where they started having open access to 
more and more gamers who would just wait in line for a whole day in order to play, I don't know, like some remedy game or whatever, right? Now, now I don't think people really feel the need to do that so much. And 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 I think E3 has has, has on both ends on from the con- the company's end and from our end as as gamers, I think it's sort of fallen out of utility. For me, I'll have good memories of E3, just like I said, skimming through magazines and seeing some cool things. I'll miss seeing Elijah Wood on Electronic Playground saying how he felt about the Lord of the Rings Two Towers game by EA Sports. You know, like I'll miss those things, but I think there's so much content on YouTube and online in general that I think it's it's one of those things where it's like people always say when Henry Ford made the car overnight, the horses, they were off the street right? It's like the industry changed right away. No more blacksmiths and any of that stuff. It was like, now it was mechanics and, and people changing tire wheels. And I think I think that's what it is for E3. It's it's kind of almost changed overnight, it feels like, and people are shocked, but it's like, well, not really. You know, social media and, and the internet's been brewing for quite some time now. So it's E3 going away. I don't feel sad like when like the last episode of Seinfeld happened. You right, know what right. I mean? It's like, I'm just sort of like, yeah, this makes sense. And um yeah, man. I mean, you can always go back to magazines and um, whatever, you know, old videos of E3 stuff just to kind of see what it was like. But I mean, I hope people don't let the memory of E3 die. I think that that's what it is. I think it's I think it's just keeping that sort of culture of like where this came from, of like how we get our news, right? The, the one thing that I think will be missed potentially with E3 is the giant spectacle around console launches. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, you know, Sony's like we 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 already live in that future because yeah. if you recall Sony's PS5 rollout, it was exciting because we have a history with playing PlayStation games. Yeah, but it was kind of underwhelming in 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 the traditional E3 sense. Like there was no there was no the there was no the Rock with Bill Gates saying Stand yeah. next. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like, dude, I was in my jogging pants and a t shirt. At my computer, when I saw the PS5 come out with the video, and I was like, is this really it? Like, this doesn't feel like this is it. And then I messaged you, and I'm like, did you see this yet? And you're like, no, not yet. I'll see it when I go home. And then I had to question what I was seeing because it was like, it was underwhelming. Like, all these con- all these console launches now are so underwhelming because um, we're watching them. I have bad news them. for you. What? The switch, the Switch Two, when they when that gets announced, or the or the Super Nintendo Switch, when that gets announced, it's uh, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be the CEO of Nintendo holding a holding a, a Bristol board, uh, yeah. like a like a science fiction, like a, like a science fair, an elementary school science fair presentation. Yeah, and he's like, uh, I can see yeah, that. N- now you can play it uh, more comfortably. Uh, enjoy your gaming, and that'll be it. Probably. I mean, I would. I wouldn't be surprised. I think like it, it'll even just. I wouldn't be surprised if they just like post on Instagram. Hey, here's the new system. What's up? And that's it. They'll call it a day. E3 will be missed for that for sure. With that aspect, I think there's only one thing that's going to be obviously missed with E3 from a from the from the corporate perspective, from the from the perspective of the console manufacturers, is having the opportunity to like get on ABC or CBS Morning News and say like. This console is going to be the greatest thing since your mother got a ring doorbell. Uh, and like a huge, 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 huge opportunity. Um, but, you know, there's still the opportunity for ma- for making news. And, um, you know, we've had this conversation before, but I, I, I do think that like if Sony or Microsoft announced a console that was 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 cheaper and uh, than than you expect and 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 played all of the games backwards compatible in a backwards compatible fashion that uh, that big enough, strong enough news will always end up uh, seeping into the mainstream and they don't need E3 for that anymore. Thank you for tuning into the Select Gaming Podcast. Like, share, and subscribe. We create videos for the Select Gaming that are guided by our personal interests and your support makes that possible.